All right. <clears throat> you guys ready to have some fun again? Chapter 13, Real-Time Imaging, Temporal Resolution. Um, in the early days, making an image was time-consuming. Images were displayed one frame at a time. We had static scanning. Um, it was impossible to image moving structures. Uh, modern days, you know, technology is so advanced now, each frame is created and displayed very quickly, providing the impression of constant motion or real-time imaging. Uh, this is this is that that live, you know, live concert you're watching on TV, or it's 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 just like you're there, right? It's as you move the probe, the the screen moves with you. You know what's on the screen moves with you. Yeah, you know, there's no longer a delay or there's no longer a wait. Um, so static scanning is a photograph or just an individual picture real-time image is now that movie or that moving picture uh, to understand all this we have to kind of break all this apart so um, movies are made up um, of a bunch of frames or a bunch of pictures together um, and then those are are shown across at a specific rate um, no different from remember uh, the corner of the book in high school when I used to draw the little the little stick man running you know the faster I flick those pages in the book and you can hear that you know the quicker it, or the more fluid it looked like the little stick figure was running if I just kind of real slow then it just it kind of looked that herky-jerky kind of you know just choppy movement that all has to do with the frame rate okay frame rate is very important that is the number of frames created per second it is determined by two things the sound speed in the medium and the depth of imaging uh, those are the things that affect the number of frames that I can create per second it is a Hertz now okay remember per second means Hertz so if I say what is my frame rate I might say 10 frames per second or 10 Hertz so note um, let's talk about the speed of sound the medium real quick and just get that out of the way the speed of sound the speed the speed of sound in soft tissue is considered to be constant at 1.54 kilometers per second or 1540 meters per second or 1.54 millimeters per microsecond therefore in clinical ultrasound the maximum imaging depth determines the frame rate in other words, that speed of sound in the medium, yeah, we understand if I ask you a question, uh, what two factors determine the frame rate. You're going to know the speed of sound in the medium and the depth of imaging. You're going to forget about the first one after that because <clears throat> we care, the only, excuse me, the only thing we care about or that we image is soft tissue. So it's constant. It'll never change. So we're going to study in detail how the depth of, the Im of, depth of imaging uh, affects our frame rate. Um, now that we understand frame rate or the number of frames per second, let's talk a little bit about temporal resolution. This is our accuracy in time or our movie, okay, our moving picture. The ability to precisely position moving structures from instant to instant. Uh, temporal resolution is excellent when the system produces many frames per second. Temporal resolution is poor when the system produces fewer frames per second. So that's no different from me doing the, the stick man at the corner of the book and, and flicking through it that fast. That's a lot per second, right? So he's going to look like it's going to look really fluid and good and my temporal resolution is going to be excellent. Whereas if I just And hopefully you can hear that that was fewer frames per second that temporal resolution is poor it's going to kind of slow down my movie it's going to degrade it what is temporal resolution determined by the frame rate I just proved it a high number of images per second improves temporal resolution or improves my movie a low number of images per second degrades or reduces um, or decreases my temporal resolution understand the terminology use whatever words you have to use as long as they mean 
the same thing. Um, again, units is is uh, units are hertz or per second because if it's determined by the frame rate, what is frame rate? A hertz or per second. Uh, so now that we've have now that we've learned the terminology, let's apply it. Um, let's you know I know you guys got this stuff. You understand it. Just follow your rules, okay? So what is the relationship? <clears throat> excuse me, between the frame rate and the time required to make a single image okay now we're we're telling you one more piece of that frame rate how do we figure it out okay well I know I can make 20 per second or 30 per second or whatever it is that's all based on the foundation which is how long does it take me to make one frame okay or one image the frame rate and the time for one frame are inversely related. When uh, when multiplied together, the result is one. They're reciprocals. So the T frame, or the time it takes to make one frame, times the frame rate, or the number of cycles per second, equals one. So as that, for example, when an ultrasound system creates an image in one tenth of a second, the frame rate is 10 frames per second or 10 hertz. I just flipped it over. And uh, if an ultrasound system creates an image in one fiftieth of a second, now that's much faster than, than one tenth of a second, correct? It, that's a shorter time it took to make a frame. So now I went from one tenth of a second to one fifty of a second. What is the frame rate? Fifty frames or fifty hertz. So now you're starting to see that. Well, the more, the faster I can make a frame, the more I can make in a second. And I know that the higher a number of frames per second I can create improves my temporal resolution. Ta-da! This simple math shows that as the time needed to make each image decreases or gets better, in this case, the frame rate increases. Think about this terminology. Normally we hear decrease as a bad word, but I'm telling you the time it takes to make each frame is getting faster, okay? Faster means decreases, you know? If I run if I run, okay, let's use a perfect example. Right now I could run the 40 yard dash in probably 40 seconds. All right, but if I start training and I get faster, then I can run the 40 yard dash in 20 seconds. Is that time not decreased? But is it a good decrease? Yes, I'm faster. The time is shortening. So if it takes less time to make a frame or that time decreases, the frame rate increases. And if the frame rate increases, what happens to my temporal resolution? It increases. It gets better with it because the frame rate determines temporal resolution. The system settings that determine frame rate. <clears throat> there are two sonographer controlled settings. Uh, their imaging depth and the number of pulses in each picture. And we're going to talk specifically about each one of those. You know, these are things that we change all the time, especially the imaging depth. Uh, imaging depth. Shallow imaging increases frame rate, therefore improves temporal resolution. Deeper imaging decreases frame rate, therefore degrades or reduces um, or decreases temporal resolution. Why? Remember the 13 microsecond rule, or remember the go return time. You know, it took the deeper I go, the longer it takes to get there and back, right? So if I tell you that my image is made up of five pulses, and and each one takes a second to go there and back, it takes five seconds to make that pulse, right? Or to make that image. Well, I'm using the same five pulses, and now I'm telling you that it takes two seconds to go there and back for each one. Well, then it, now it takes 10 seconds to make each image. 
So the deeper I go, the longer it takes to go there and back. You see how this is starting to relate to how fast I can make one frame, which then directly affects the frame rate. So, and that directly affects the temporal resolution. And I'm not directly relating these things. I'm directly affecting these things. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying. Uh, imaging depth and frame rate are in are inversely related. So the deeper I image, it affects how fast I make a frame. So it increases the time it takes to make each frame. Therefore, it decreases my frame rate or number of cycles I can make per second. Those are inversely related, correct? I hope you said correct. Figure 13 one shows that. Remember, you know, when you when you're looking at this stuff, you know, in the notes that I've given you, you know, follow the pictures in the book. They're awesome. Use the, the literature in the book. You know, complement the literature in the book with these notes. Okay, this is the important stuff, but use those pictures as well. So let's prove it. <clears throat> the T frame, excuse me, equals the number of pulses times the PRP or the pulse repetition period or the go return time. You know, the start of that pulse comes all the way there, goes all the way, goes all the way there, comes all the way back, boom, another one starts. That from the start of one pulse to the start of the next, the go return time. They just threw PRP in there. That's that's what we're thinking about. T frame equals number of pulses times the PRP. So for example, an ultrasound system creates an image with 100 distinct sound pulses. Each pulse travels to a maximum depth that requires a round trip time or PRP of one one thousandths of a second. What is the time needed to make a single frame? Well, let's do the math. We know that the T frame is the number of pulses times the PRP. So let's input our information. We have a hundred pulses times the PRP, which is one one thousandths of a second. Therefore, if we do the math, that becomes 100 over a thousand, which is one tenth of a second. Our T frame is one tenth of a second. The time it takes to make one frame or one image, I'm sorry, one, yes, one image is one tenth of a second. What is my frame rate? Flip it over. My frame rate is 10 hertz. Simple as that. So now imagine that the sonographer adjusts the depth of view to half as deep. Half as deep is the same thing as saying, I just went shallow. Okay. Half as deep as I was. If I was 10 centimeters, I'm now 5 centimeters. But I, I went exactly half. <clears throat> the pulse time of flight will be 0.5 over a thousand or 0.5 thousandths of a second instead of 1 one thousandths of a second. If the pulse travels half as deep, the go return time is half as long. That's where that number come from, comes from. So if it took me one one thousandth of a second, it's half of that, 0.5 over a thousand. Uh, since the image still requires 100 pulses, uh, this, uh, the time it takes to make one frame is now what? Well, let's do the math. T frame equals number of pulses times the PRP. We still have the same 100 pulses, but now it's multiplied times that 0.5 or 0 0.5 over a thousand seconds of a second which then becomes 100 times 0 0.0005 seconds, which is 0 0.05 seconds or 1 20th of a second is the time that it takes for me to make one frame. So what is my frame rate? 20 hertz. So do you see how shallower, shallower imaging increased my frame rate? Yes, you do. Frame rate increases, therefore temporal resolution is increased. All right, so go and review and understand and know Table 13.1, and that talks about imaging depth and temporal resolution, shallow imaging versus deeper imaging. And we will continue with the next video.